Hi, it's me, Ingrid INFP. And this video will be a half hour rant on different subjects. Um, so, a strap in. Um, I'm angry about many things today. Um, and I, I started my day on a good mood, but all the things that I've been thinking about throughout the week have uh, now accumulated to this boiling point. I don't think I'll be especially angry, but it's more that I'll be, uh, I'll be on the rat. So my first thing that I want to talk about is um, that my ISTJ dad, I told my ISTJ dad about plans of going to Japan this summer. And he was like, well, what are the plans? And I was like, well, um, I don't know, sometime in the beginning of August, maybe I'll go to Tokyo and maybe I'll go to Kyoto and maybe I'll go to the countryside somewhere. But I haven't booked any tickets and I haven't booked any uh, hotels or anything. Uh, I'll just see how things go, you know. And he was like, no, you need to book everything, you know. Then that means that you don't have any plans if you haven't booked anything. And well, ISTJs, you know, they, <laughs> they're really good at planning and they really love planning. And my dad is really good at planning things to make it as complicated as possible. Uh, to save as much money as possible um so he wouldn't understand why i would like buy a plane ticket that is super expensive that is like he would choose the ticket he would always choose the cheapest ticket over the one that is um easiest so um and so he's like you know you need to be researching now it's like the the money and everything and I am uh, not buying any tickets until I know like what I'm doing and it will be fine. But I, I did get very anxious because my dad has kind of that power over me of making me really anxious about um, my plans. Um, it makes me feel like, oh, I'm, I'm not capable of doing anything myself. I'm useless and why am I not listening to him? Of course, the tickets will start costing a lot of money. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to disregard what he said uh, and just take it easy. I'm not going to uh, be buying any plane tickets uh, just yet until the plans are finalized. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that was my rant about him. I'm going from like the, the things that annoy me the least to the things that annoy me the most, uh, kind of. Then another thing that has annoyed me is um, that I found out that my cousin, who has an autistic child, um, is putting him through ABA therapy five days a week in the US, which obviously costs a lot of money, takes a lot of time and energy. ABA therapy is denounced by the autistic um, activist community uh, here online. Um, it st stands for Applied Behavioral Analysis, and it's an old therapy. Um, and it's basically dog training for children. And it's basically uh, giving rewards for expected behavior, like, you know, normal behavior, basically. Uh, allistic behavior and um, punishing them for behaviors that are not acceptable acceptable in quotation marks um, so that means like rewarding children for um, doing eye contact re repetition of, of these exercises um, like uh, rewarding them for uh, like cooperation and um, punishing them for having meltdowns and that kind of thing. Now, my uh, cousin is an autism activist herself uh, because of her uh, autistic son. He is very um, high support needs. Um, he didn't start speaking until he was around four or five. He has a twin brother, but not identical twin, uh, who does not have autism. And uh, he has an older brother. And I haven't met the twins because I haven't been in the U.S. since they were born, but I have met the older brother. And she's, she's a great parent and she really defends her children, protective of her children. 
But it does make me sad to find out that she has her autistic child in ABA therapy because that will lead to trauma. The autism activists who went through ABA therapy and are now adults have said that um, they say that ABA therapy has traumatized them. Uh, for the most part, most of these activists. The only problem is that um, it's the only treatment that is often available and it's the one that is recommended by these uh, autism associations like Autism Speaks. Go into any autism community, uh, a lot of people have bad things to say about um, Autism Speaks. Basically, Autism Speaks uh, with the Puzzle Piece logo, a lot of autistic people uh, reject the, uh, the Puzzle Piece logo because it means that there's something missing in them or that um, Autism Speaks is trying to find a cure rather than do research to actually find accommodations that can help autistic people. Instead, they're trying to eradicate uh, autism and um, kind of like on this eugenics kind of way. Um, and unfortunately, ABA therapy is still promoted all across the world as the treatment for autism. When there are other kinds of therapies that are not uh, as uh, traumatic, or that are not traumatic at all because the, the purpose is different. So, I don't know. My, uh, my cousin is really, um, she'll, she'll write like these posts about like, oh, this meltdowns does not mean that he is, um, uh, that he is badly behaved. It means that he is overwhelmed by sensory overload and such. And she would write these things on Instagram. But then I saw in her post that she, the way that they deal with meltdowns is that he takes Prozac and um, that, uh, that her child takes Prozac and uh, goes to ABA therapy. And I think ABA therapy should stop. Um, I think it's inhumane. Um, I think it's kind of like conversion therapy for LGBTQ people that has been outlawed in many places. Um, like ABA therapy is basically not treating autistic children as human, as, um, you know, actual people with a mind. Um, and it's harmful. So yeah, that's uh, my take on ABA therapy and my rant on that. Uh, the next rant is uh, kind of uh, similar. <laughs> it's uh, uh, about um, my, uh, I think that he's an ITP uh, colleague um, who is really into alternative medicines and he doesn't like uh, using uh, antidepressants on uh, people who are depressed. He uh, took up in our doctor's meeting about um, that a person wanted, a patient wanted to change doctors from him to somebody else because the patient said that uh, he was unprofessional for not giving him antidepressants, which uh, the patient had asked for. Now, most people don't ask for antidepressants first thing that they come in uh, when they are depressed, but if they go to the doctor, that's kind of what they want. Otherwise, they would be going to a therapist or whatever, or maybe they want a referral to a therapist. But this guy already had a therapist and... Um, he went to the antidepressants and he was clearly depressed. Um, this doctor did the test for depression and this uh, person scored highly on the depression scale. And yet he's, this doctor said, no, well, he's just in an acute crisis. He needs to uh, uh, like meditate more and um, he needs to learn how to uh, handle his anxiety. Mm. Yeah. Where did I hear that before? Yeah, I don't know. I got uh, the, um, um, th this was an Easter egg, um, half price because, because Easter is done, done with. Um, so sorry I'm eating. Uh, it's just I'm trying to like release the tension. Um, yeah, and so Obviously, this patient was expecting something and the patient 
was angry at the doctor. And the doctor, he wanted to have some kind of routine when a patient wants to change doctors, that the previous doctor goes and sits in with the new doctor in order to have a smooth transition uh, that is good for everybody. But, you know, if a patient doesn't like you, then they don't like you. They won't like you even if you come in uh, to some other doctor visit. The ESFP doctor, um, <laughs> he kind of said, oh my God, you're making things so complicated. And that's kind of how it is. Um, if somebody doesn't want to see me, if they don't want to be my patient, then fine, they can leave. I work in public health care. Um, I have enough to do as it is, you know. If you're going to leave, then leave, you know. I probably didn't um, have an easy time dealing with you anyway, you know. Um, of course, it's not a good sign if everybody starts leaving. But, well, this doctor has a lot of patients leaving. And it doesn't mean that his, um, his way of treatment is bad, you know, it might just mean that he has difficulty um, relating to people, I guess. But there are certain cases where I have to follow regulations as a doctor, because I'm not a private doctor, I'm a public health care doctor, and so I need to follow regulations. And the regulations say that uh, if somebody is badly depressed, then uh, they should be at least, um, you know, provided with uh, antidepressants if the patient wants them. And this patient wanted them. And the doctor said no, because it's a psychoactive substance. And it's always the same problem with this guy. He's, he keeps doing this. But he said antidepressants have an amphetamine-like effect. Uh, when you first take them, and that's why this patient was looking for antidepressants, so that he could get a kick. And that wasn't going to solve this problem. And I said, uh, at the doctor's meeting, I said, that is not true. Uh, serotonin receptors are not dopamine receptors, which is what amphetamine goes on. Amphetamine goes on dopamine receptors, it gives you dopamine, which is that kick. Um, and antidepressants give you serotonin, which gives you the sta stability. Of course, there's tons of, of um, you know, theories and speculations and that, oh, the serotonin um, hypothesis doesn't uh, work for depression. But it's like we don't have any other explanation. And somehow we have to rely on empirical data, basically, that people... Um, we notice that patients who are on antidepressants um, are less suicidal. Uh, we notice um, that uh, a lot of them do feel better after getting antidepressants. Um, we cannot take a test in the brain uh, to see that somebody is um, doing badly, you know, or how, how their serotonin levels in the brain are. We're still in the research stage of these kinds of things. So we have to rely on certain kinds of data. But the thing is, he kind of only looks at the data that fits his, his idea that antidepressants are bad. I mean, I don't love antidepressants either. I mean, I have uh, side effects from my uh, medication and I take the lowest dosage because I don't want to go on a higher dosage. Um, but I have to admit that I... Uh, have a hard time surviving in this world uh, without them at the moment and um, I've tried to go down in dosage but it is hard to go up off them yes but there's a reason for that it's because those medications are actually helping um, they're maybe not helping completely in the way that I'd like them to but it, it, anything that does help I'll, I'll take you know um, and it's not drugs you can't get addicted to them you can't get high on them. There is some research that shows that uh, um, SSRIs, even on the first day of um, use, can help certain uh, conditions, such as PMDS. Um, if you have PMS, then it can um, 
like if you have the mood swings before your period, then uh, taking serotonin just those days before your period uh, will help. You don't need to take it every day. Um, but for depression, then uh, you need to take it every day because it needs to be in a stable level in the blood for a long time. And it kind of reshapes the synapses in your brain and stuff. Anyway, so I got mad and said it. You know, I said, no, that that doesn't work, first of all. And then I said, you know, and he was like, oh, well, where do you, you get your information? I got this information from this book. And uh, I was like, yeah, well, I got this information from the uh, senior psychiatrist in town who is really um, good at pharmacology. And he knows how, how all of these medications work. And he said, oh, no, him, he's just a medicalization doctor. He just medicalizes people. And I was like, you know, um, you asked me a question and I replied. And then it was like, just, you'd rather believe this book than to believe the, um, the psychiatrist in town. What are we going to do? You know, you're working in public health care. I, I think that he should move to <laughs> private health care because... Um, it's hard if he's going to do things his own way and the patients change to us um it's not professional you know it's not um because if uh, once once patients start noticing that different doctors do different things it's not easy for us afterwards to take care of these patients and this patient was clearly depressed from from the um, test that uh, they took and this person clearly wanted antidepressants and like who am I to like deny somebody a medication that is very common that isn't addictive and that uh, could help the patient anyway I got mad about that and the thing is when I start when I say something then suddenly everybody stops talking and then they're like, no, 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 we, we don't need to discuss this anymore. And it's like, okay, so it, people are just not interested in hearing my point of view, apparently. Um, but it is kind of sad because, I mean, this has happened several times before where it's like, okay, I, I usually stay out of conflicts and stuff and I try to avoid it. And then, and then I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to say my, my opinion. My opinion isn't that he's a bad doctor. My opinion is that he uh, needs to realize that um, he's not alone working with uh, these patients and that um, we try to go in a different route and we can't all be doing whatever we think seems best um, because <laughs> we're, we're a part of the system of healthcare. Anyway, so that was my rant about him. Now let's get to the big rant of um, gender. So Bufo made a video. Uh, and at the same time, I bought this shirt, okay? This shirt is a flowery shirt. Um, I got it at the secondhand boutique. And when I was going to buy it, um, it cost 10 crowns less um, than it said on the thing. And... Uh, the person at the desk said, the cashier, uh, said that, oh, um, it's a crown, uh, 10 crowns less because it's, um, it's in the men's section, actually, and it was uh, falsely uh, put into the women's section. And I'm like, okay, well, I mean, it's very floral, so it's like that, that's mostly a woman's shirt, but I guess that the fit is kind of boxy and kind of a little bit masculine. Um, <laughs> And so I was like confused and that got me thinking because I was um, watching Bufo's video uh, today about being a toxic frog, which she isn't, um, she's not a toxic at all. Um, it's society that's toxic and uh, there are so many ways that we can have internalized ableism, internalized uh, uh, transphobia, homophobia, uh, sexism, um, well, misogyny. And um, so I want to tell a story about um, one of my classmates in medical school. 
and this classmate, um, I think, I hope that he turned out to become a dermatologist, um, because we don't have a lot of dermatologists in Sweden, and uh, he was really interested in that. He, mind you, he was married and uh, had a child, um, so, uh, you know, he has regular contact with the women in his life. But he said to me once, oh, you, um, if I got to choose which gender I would be, I would, uh, well, which sex I would be, it would be, um, I, I would decide to be a woman because I wouldn't get prostate cancer. And I was like, okay, so you're willing to disregard all of the problems with being of the female sex just because uh, of prostate cancer? Are you that afraid of prostate cancer, which you will probably get after you're 70 years old, you know, probably even later than that. And most prostate cancer doesn't even give you any problems except uh, with peeing, which women also have problems with peeing. They mostly have incontinence rather than the other way around, which is difficulty starting um, mixation, which is what um, men tend to develop. Um, you know, uh, men aren't the only ones who have that kind of problem. And also most prostate cancer uh, arrives so late in life that that's not what the person dies of. Um, it develops very slowly. Women are at a much, much higher risk of having breast cancer. Men can have breast cancer, but like, you know, that's uh, very, very uncommon for men. Uh, also, women can have uterine um, um, cancer. You can have ovarian cancer. Um, women are more likely to develop autoimmune diseases. Yes, women do, in general, tend to live longer than men. But um, it used to be that the women died more in childbirth. Now they don't. But in a lot of parts of the world, they still die a lot of childbirth. Um, Women uh, get all sorts of different uh, problems uh, from uh, going through puberty, going through menopause, hormonal uh, changes. Uh, they also um, go through hormonal changes and can get all sorts of diseases from being pregnant. Um, like you can get postpartum psychosis, you can get postpartum depression, um, you, can, um, you can develop uh, diabetes. From being pregnant, um, you can develop uh, preeclampsia and eclampsia, and you can die, or you could get um, high blood pressure for the rest of your life, um, <laughs> you know, and you can develop anemia because of um, uh, your uh, menses, you can develop um, um, endometriosis, which uh, uh, cannot officially be diagnosed until you are actually. Uh, like they do an explorative surgery on you. Um, I mean, you can uh, possibly see these kinds of lesions um, with a CAT scan or an ultrasound, but the only way to um, say that the diagnosis is correct is actually through uh, open surgery. Um, you know, and the only treatments are, are like things that stop bleedings and um, hormonal therapy, which isn't without its consequences. So there are a lot of problems. I highly invite you to go and read this book, Go Figure by Lisa Falco. Really good book. Um, it has a lot of facts about different things. Um, so I think that I'm allowed to be a little bit angry about his response um, because prostate cancer is only one problem out of 10,000 problems that a female body um, means. Having extra years in your life as a female does not mean that your quality of life is better. Actually, it's the case that um, to do economical things in healthcare, they uh, use a measurement called qualies, Q-A-L-Y 
one quality of life year. So one quality of life year is one year of your life where you are in perfect health and have perfect quality of life. Uh, or you can have great quality of life and not um, and, and have uh, certain diseases. But it has to be that you consider your quality of life to be at that 100%, basically. And if you are extremely sick, then one year of your life extremely sick um, does not count as much in your overall life, quality of life, um, as a year where you were in perfect health, obviously. Um, and so in terms of qu years of quality of life, women have less years. A lot of their life is filled with different diseases, different healthcare conditions, um, psychiatric uh, problems that leads to decreased quality of life. So even if they have more life years uh, in general as a, as a mean, you know, on average, uh, they have a lesser um, time of being healthy and being able to do the things that they want to do. Um, and there are all sorts of reasons why that is, which I, I can't go into into this video, but um, I think that just the biological sex of being a woman does make life uh, more complicated. Um, you know, having to deal with your period uh, once a month or not having your period because you're having something else that's uh, disrupting your hormones, having to deal with hormones all the time, you know, and I would argue that uh, women are stronger, <laughs> okay, we're not weaker, um, we're stronger because we have to deal with this and be more resistant, you know, to all these problems that our body is causing us, you know, but that's just my point of view. Um, but I did get angry about that because about that comment and it's kind of a little bit like the comments that, um, um, Bufo, uh, took up about being, uh, told that, uh, easy mode, that woman is easy mode of life, uh, is not, it really isn't. And I have met uh, a guy who was a men's rights activist and I've, t you know, people on both sides don't listen to each other. But I, I want to say, even to, to the commenters, um, that you cannot compare people's pain in, in that way, you know? Um, I think that there is a way to say that, oh, I see that your life has been full of struggles, but those struggles were not because you were a man. The struggles were because of other things, because of social economic uh, status, uh, because uh, of the color of your skin, or because um, uh, you know your your parents were ill, or all sorts of things. But um, saying that life is easy mode in general for women as opposed to men is not reflective of reality. Um, and I, I, I don't, I can't stand any detractions, any deviations from that topic. Okay. Um, a lot of men, I know a lot of men who have been through terrible things and who, um, you know, are struggling with a lot of things. And I know that, but saying that it's because that they are male, that they're going through these things is not true you know and i i know that people treat men um with less um courteous kindness and, and that kind of thing um but you're you're not seeing things from a woman's perspective um and i know that women can also uh, be perpetrators of abuse and uh, they can also be, um, you know, narcissistic, terrible people. Uh, I mean, nobody's immune from that. But in general, 
making generalizations on, on people in general, men are more privileged in the world, in any kind of society, and most societies, unless you live in like Barbie land, basically. Unless you live in Barbie land, then uh, women are um, the oppressed ones. And I, I know that men are suffering. I do know that. And like, I mean, I've been friends with uh, uh, men who have been um, physically, sexually abused. Uh, so I'm not going to be taking that away from, from them, you know. I'm just saying that in general, you know, if we're going to be making generalizations anyway, um, you know, it shouldn't be that controversial to say that uh, women have life on hard mode as opposed to easy mode, you know. Um, so I, I do get mad about that um, because it's like, how am I supposed to argue against that? There's no way for me to argue against that without sounding like I'm a butthurt, sensitive person and that I am hysteric. Um, you know, some, some people still live in like the 19th century or something. Anyway, so those were my rants for today. I've been going on for more than half an hour now, so it's time to end this. Have a great day, everybody.